Three people were fishing on a yacht. Just as they threw the bait into the water, a shark immediately bit the hook. They exerted tremendous effort to pull the shark up, and discovered only the head of the fish remained. Its body had been eaten by something. As the three people were shocked, an unidentified creature opened its huge mouth, and swallowed the entire yacht. All of this food is not even enough to fill a gap in its teeth. Two Spanish fishermen were fishing in the sea at night. A lightning bolt struck the sea below their boat, but it didn't catch their attention. The sky was filled with countless shooting stars. Upon closer inspection, all the shooting stars were landing on the sea surface in front of them. In the night, a group of disobedient children were surfing on the sea. Miles, who was on a surfboard, was thrown into the sea. He thought his companions would come back to save him. However, they kept moving further away. At that moment, a small boat in the distance caught Miles' attention. A gigantic creature dove into the water from the boat. It had four legs and a long tail. He quickly grabbed the surfboard as a lifeline. He wanted to swim back to the boat. Suddenly, he heard a sound behind him. Miles turned his head. The creature seemed to be hiding in the water, playing hide-and-seek with him. Miles didn't care, and swam desperately forward. Unexpectedly, the creature appeared right in front of him. The two stared at each other. Miles was so scared that he dared not breathe. He couldn't determine what this creature was going to do. Fortunately, his companion's small boat came back to pick him up. The creature disappeared on its own. The next day, Miles told his classmates about his experience as a fantastic story. However, no one believed him. Instead, they ridiculed him, saying that oddities were just figments of his imagination. He told his sister about the incident. She felt he should focus on studying and progressing, rather than indulging in wild thoughts. Miles felt dissatisfied in his heart. In the evening, he asked his good friend, Field, to accompany him. They went to the location where the water creature had appeared and waited. They wanted to prove that his words were not false. Not for a while. A piercing sound came first. They rowed the boat closer, and shone a flashlight on the water surface. They discovered a layer of pebbles floating on the sea surface. The water had become thick and sticky. After scooping up one of them with a fishing net, the two returned home. Miles put the pebble-like object into a fish tank. It's not hard to imagine. It must be the egg of the water monster. Will they grow into large water monster that pose a threat to humans? We will wait and see. On the other side, during a scientific exploration, the US military discovered a missing nuclear-powered submarine. The military broke open the entrance, and soldiers entered the cabin. The temperature inside was comfortable, neither too cold nor too hot. Even the fruits remained fresh. The game on the table was only halfway played. The bread had only been partially bitten into. There were no signs of struggle or resistance. While all the crew members were missing, all electronic devices were burned out simultaneously as if short-circuited. The person in charge found everything excessively strange. This nuclear-powered submarine had been missing for 47 hours. It appeared over 5,000 miles away. What kind of speed could make it arrive in such a short time? Could it be an enemy country launching a clandestine attack with a mysterious weapon? Professor Whitebeard didn't think so. If it could be that simple, that would be great. In order to uncover the truth, the military, under the guidance of Professor Whitebeard, deployed a small submarine. Selena, as a marine biologist, descended with everyone. She was also responsible for operating the submarine. In the pitch black deep sea, various fresh fish swam around the submarine. They continued to dive deeper. Bubbles and warm currents caused by volcanic eruptions appeared before their eyes, along with abundant nutrients for the marine organisms nearby to absorb and consume. This made the scenery before them exceptionally colorful and vibrant. While Selena was recording data, suddenly she saw a flash of light before her eyes. She concentrated and looked outside attentively. There was no abnormality. She asked the control room about the radar display. They said there was nothing. Selena thought she was just too nervous. Then she heard a piercing sound. Selena looked out from another window. She saw a flashing giant creature. Its speed was so fast that she couldn't see its full appearance before it disappeared. The radar display still didn't capture any signals. Selena decided to explore the vicinity, to see if she could find any suspicious creatures. After a while, a huge abyss appeared in front of the submarine. It was pitch black below. Selena wanted to dive in and take a closer look. The instrument panel showed abnormal movements. The diving depth suddenly increased. The submarine was pushed upwards by something. Towards the sea surface, the entire submarine shook violently. The submarine couldn't regain control. Everyone in the command room panicked. Then all the instruments went black screen. The control room lost contact with the submarine. However, the crisis of the submarine was not yet resolved. They rolled and ascended continuously. The pain from the impacts forced Selena to hold her head and minimize the damage. She tried to regain control of the submarine, but was powerless. She could only watch as the giant creature outside continued to collide with the submersible. Luckily, the structure of the submarine remained stable, and wasn't damaged by the impacts. With Selena's rescue efforts, 
they safely returned to the sea surface, on the research vessel. Selina excitedly told everyone, that there are many unknown creatures in the ocean depths. Everyone was focused on discussing the new discoveries. They ignored the crisis they had just experienced. It must have been the sound waves of the giant, creature interfering with electronic devices. Such vocal patterns had never been discovered before. Selina became more and more excited as she spoke. The leaders confirmed further. Are you saying you encountered a sea monster? Selina confidently said yes. Is this the reason for all the strange events happening worldwide? Selina discovered a new continent. She thought she could show her skills and abilities, but as soon as she returned to the company, she was informed that the military had taken over. Professor Whitebeard met Selina. They discussed the sea monster issue. It seemed like Professor Whitebeard had known about the sea monster's existence for a long time. His description matched exactly what Selina had initially learned. Selina thought she had found a kindred spirit, but then she was told, you're fired. They immediately asked her to sign a resignation document. Selina was still lamenting that it was she who discovered a new species. It was so unkind of them to do this. However, her grievances fell on deaf ears. She was left out in the cold. A talented marine biologist who could operate a submarine, now was unemployed. Strange events were still happening worldwide. In the night, the lighthouse keeper was watching TV. Suddenly, he heard a piercing sound coming from the sea. The TV screen flickered with interference. He went to the window and looked out at the sea. The piercing sound was unbearable. Suddenly, all the glass shattered in an instant. The lighthouse's light went out as well. A massive monster was slowly revealing itself on the sea surface. On the other side, the two brothers were diving. They were hunting with their harpoons. They thought they could catch a big one, but they encountered a sea monster instead. In the chaos, the younger brother was dragged away by the sea monster. The elder brother ran out of oxygen and floated to the surface. He was rescued by his companion and taken to the hospital for treatment. When he woke up, he learned that his brother's body had not been found yet. After that dive, the two brothers were forever separated. Justin, the elder brother, was devastated by this. He blamed himself for his brother's death. Several days later, the story returned to the perspective of the young boy, Miles. His mother noticed that the fish in the fish tank were gone. Miles approached to check if the pebble he had collected was still there. To his surprise, there was nothing in the water. He tried to find an excuse to brush it off. Suddenly, the fish tank exploded on its own. The electronic devices inexplicably started flickering. There were traces of sticky slime on the ground. Miles followed the trail of slime and arrived at the bathroom. He saw the true form of the little monster. Indeed, the egg, resembling a pebble, had hatched and formed. It had grown to be the size of a small dog in just a few days. Miles was ecstatic. Finally, he had a one-of-a-kind pet in the whole world. However, he had to secretly feed and keep it in the warehouse when his family wasn't paying attention. He couldn't let anyone else know except for his good friend, Field. After all, they had retrieved the egg together. So, the pet was their shared secret. On the other side, Selina, an unemployed marine biologist, couldn't accept her situation. She called her father to express her grievances. Yet she saw a news report on the television about a giant unidentified creature. An unidentified creature had stranded on an island. It was several times larger than a whale. The authorities were keeping it a secret. It was ironic how it could appear on TV immediately. Selina saw the news and realized that it was the sea monster she had encountered. Justin, who had recovered from the hospital, also saw this news report. He believed it was the sea monster that had taken his brother. He drove overnight to reach the location where the sea monster appeared in the news. As a result, the area had already been blocked. No one was allowed to enter. Even the surrounding residents were ordered to evacuate. Justin's attempt to forcefully enter was unsuccessful. He had a clever idea. He decided to secretly rent a small boat from the local fishermen to sneak onto the island. Selina also had the same idea. Together with her child, the three of them decided to rent the boat and go together. Nightfall was the perfect time to set off. The three of them arrived at the island where the sea monster had been spotted. The place had been cleaned up thoroughly. Everything had been packed up and taken away. Not a trace was left. The two of them sighed, realizing that their efforts had been in vain. Their son screamed in fear at the sight of the worms on the water's surface. Selina covered his mouth to silence him. She then observed the worms. These were marine creatures called blind brutes. They usually parasitize on whales. The appearance of the sea monster on the island might be closely related to them. Therefore, they decided to take one back for further research. On the other side, the authorities were studying the sea monster they brought back in the laboratory. Its teeth alone were larger than any creature that human knew. Top scientists from around the world gathered in the laboratory. They were studying and dissecting this colossal creature together. It was impossible to open the creature's mouth with the strength of several people. They needed a hydraulic jack. After measuring various data, the reports were released. This was the largest known creature surpassing the current understanding. The skin was so tough that laser cutting was necessary. Just half an hour passed. The laser had no effect on its skin. 
they had to increase the power of laser, and concentrate on spot shooting. Finally, a crack appeared on the surface of the sea monster's skin. However, the equipment started to malfunction and flicker. Professor Whitebeard signaled to stop the experiment. The next moment, the monster's skin suddenly burst open. Yellowish slime splattered out. The force was so great that it knocked down the experimenters. Everyone quickly transported the injured to the hospital for urgent treatment. When Professor Whitebeard visited the injured in the hospital, his heartbeat suddenly skyrocketed. The doctor came to check, and the heartbeat reached 242. It exceeded the human limit. The injured person's face oozed yellowish slime in agonizing pain. If this continued, the injured person would die from a heart rupture. However, the doctors could only perform standard resuscitation. Fortunately, the person survived the ordeal and calmed down. The doctor told Professor Whitebeard that his life was saved, but he might not wake up. The professor expressed understanding, but felt extremely reluctant. This was his capable assistant. What was the composition of the slime on the sea monster? What kind of strange energy did it possess? The answer would soon be revealed. Later that night, the assistant suddenly woke up, with a determined gaze. He removed the devices from his body. He quickly unraveled the bandages on his body, just when you thought he was going to mutate. He turned around and smiled, revealing a handsome face. The nurses were shocked. What kind of operation is this? No scars and even a bonus skin rejuvenation treatment. The assistant became 10 years younger and unharmed. It seems that the monster's slime is nothing but collagen. It's just the color that's a bit disgusting. Professor Whitebeard in the laboratory noticed this. He received photos sent back by the underground magma layer robot. There were unidentified creatures swimming in it. To verify his hypothesis, Professor Whitebeard applied the yellow slime to his palm. Then he picked up a spray gun and burned it. As a result, his hands did not burn. Professor Whitebeard's hand remained unharmed. Not even a single hair was burned. The yellow slime was unaffected, if it's not mistaken. These creatures rely on their own slime. They are heat-resistant and possess self-healing capabilities. If this discovery is used in the cosmetic surgery industry, it will make a fortune. Of course, the professor is not that superficial. They intend to apply the research in the military field. Strange events are still occurring. A lake in Texas evaporated instantly. Only a hot hole remained in the center. If it's not mistaken, it's the sea monster attacking freshwater now. The two friends on this side are feeding their pet sea monster at home, and they named it Nim. They bought goldfish to feed Nim. Seeing that Nim stunned the goldfish first, and then swallowing them whole, it played happily in the bathtub. The next day, Miles and Field were playing with Nim in the warehouse. Suddenly, the TV flickered while they were teasing Nim, but the TV plug wasn't connected. Does Nim have its own electricity? Is it DC or AC power? At that moment, Miles' father entered the warehouse. He didn't say anything while observing the two playing kids. He just took his toolbox and left. The kids were still puzzled, wondering if their dad didn't see the little monster. Then they saw Nim climbing onto the door frame. It even waved goodbye to their departing dad. How adorable. Peaceful days on this side. While the other side is full of disasters and hardships, several girls are playing paragliding. One of the girls in the air is recording the scenery with a DV camera. Suddenly, a whirlpool appears in front of a yacht, and it's continuously getting bigger. The girl quickly shouted, and turned back to her companions. Her companions thought she was just overly excited, and didn't hear her, just before everyone knew it. The entire yacht was sucked into the whirlpool, it disappeared completely, there's no need to think much, it must be the sea monster's doing. Selena is unyielding and she refuses to give up on her research, she's still looking for an opportunity to turn the tide. She asks her researcher friends for help, to analyze the monster's genes. The results show that, the sea monster has 10% of genes from a Lyopleurodon, it's a species that went extinct in the dinosaur era. Selena receives the conclusion, and calls Professor Whitebeard. He agrees to meet her at a specified time and place. Then, he takes her on a helicopter. As they observe the steam erupting from the underwater volcano, the professor says, this is where Selena discovered the sea monster. There are many things in this world that exceed our knowledge. Not everything needs to be understood. Being too curious can harm you. Selena doesn't understand. You're teaching me how to do things. Professor Whitebeard said it can also be understood that way. The two of them part ways unhappily. How could Selena give up? If you don't take me along, I will research on my own. She finds her colleagues at the research institute for help. The other party ignored her. They also said that if Selena continues to do this, her degree would be re-evaluated. Not only would she lose her job, she would even lose her professional certification. Selena felt that there was someone controlling the course of events. There must be a big secret inside that is unknown to everyone. The unique personality of female leads in American series is once they are determined, they will stick to it. Regardless of the difficulties ahead, Selena took out the recording from the exploration that night. She wanted to find some clues. However, she discovered that the disc had been tampered with. She couldn't hear anything from it. 
All the leads she could investigate were cut off. She had no choice but to wait for the situation to develop, and search for new opportunities, and there was nothing she could do at the moment. On another beach, everyone was enjoying sunbathing. A little girl shouted to her mother that there was a monster. Her mother told her to play aside. As a result, the little girl held a giant squid in her hand. Her mother looked shocked and asked, where did you find it? The little girl pointed with her small hand. Only then did her mother see that the entire coastline was filled with squids. As far as the eye could see, this made the restaurant owner realize a business opportunity. He collected the squids and packaged them as ingredients to sell in a unified manner. This made Selena, who worked at the restaurant, realize that something was amiss. The mass deaths of squids must be related to whales. She found her friend Wilson and borrowed a boat to go out to sea to search for the known area where the sperm whales appeared. However, even after a long time, there were no whales in sight. Selena felt that something must have happened. Indeed, Wilson spotted floating whale carcasses in the distance. They were covered in claw marks. Selena was still in shock. She decided to dive into the water to investigate. Wilson strongly discouraged her. Suddenly, a wave appeared on the sea surface. Shadows could be seen swimming beneath the water. Selena asked Wilson to steer the boat and follow. She prepared to record the event. The sonar system on the boat detected a target. They were right behind the unknown creature. Selena asked Wilson to stop the boat and wait for the unknown creature to surface to capture this historic moment on video. However, the sonar system indicated that the creature changed direction. It swiftly swam towards their boat. The shadow on the sea surface drew closer. Then, a barrage of lightning and various attacks followed. All electronic devices exploded. In a flash, the boat lost power. All right, they hasn't seen the monster yet and can't go home either. The two of them drifted at sea overnight. Fortunately, the monster didn't attack them again. Otherwise, based on other beach incidents, they should have been swallowed by the monster long ago. The next day, Selena jumped into the water. She wanted to fix the propeller. As she was nervously working, the monster was swimming around beneath the water. Selena quickly returned to the surface. She asked Wilson to hand her the fish gun with a locator. She went underwater again. She wasn't afraid of being eaten by the monster but solely focused on tracking its movements. I suspect the monster was attracted by the nearby whale carcasses. Therefore, it was not interested in consuming humans weighing over 100 kilograms. Otherwise, Selena wouldn't have been able to successfully shoot the locator onto the monster's body and return safely to the boat. Where did the previously setting of impenetrable and hardened shell that resisted laser shots? Anyway, the two of them used the locator to observe the monster's movement patterns. It was indeed as swift as the wind, fast as lightning, reaching a speed of 260 kilometers per hour. It was likely because it could be powered by electricity. On the other side, Miles and his family were having dinner. Suddenly, there was an explosion and fire in the warehouse, and Nim was inside. Miles hurriedly went to check, and found Nim missing. There's another lead, Justin. He was traumatized by his brother's death. He often felt like something in the water was talking to him. Then he would go crazy, and start hitting the water's surface. He was fired by the company and lost his job. His wife can't stand it either and left with their daughter. He was left alone. This strengthened his determination to seek revenge on the monster. He's really paranoid to a certain extent. On that day, on the shallow beach, a giant monster was swimming around. All the tourists were watching its movements closely. They were curious about what it is. Where did it come from? Where did it want to go? The Coast Guard was following behind cautiously, not daring to advance recklessly. They were also shouting to the crowd on the shore. We are only guiding it into the deep sea area. We will not harm it. Three small boats honked their horns at the monster. They wanted to establish communication. The monster dived directly into the water and disappeared. Everyone thought it understood the horn signals and left. They even applauded. Selena and Justin in the crowd didn't think so. They knew the monster had just dived but hadn't left. They continued filming with their camcorder. Then, a piercing sound came. Everyone couldn't bear it and covered their ears. As the sea surface flickered with green light, electronic devices, wires, and circuits sparked. The boat also lost power. Selena and Justin were different from everyone else. They were extremely excited. They finally captured a video of the monster. At this moment, government officials approached. Justin wanted to negotiate peacefully, but he was detained as soon as he turned around. Selena was taken away immediately after. Then, she encountered an old acquaintance, Professor Whitebeard. They communicated on the side. Professor Whitebeard said they didn't want Selena involved, because he was afraid she might get implicated. It was like the excuse given by a scumbag during a breakup. Because the government and military were paying exceptional attention to this matter, they wanted to keep it secret. Selena argued logically. How can they keep it a secret when everyone on the beach saw it? Many people even recorded videos. The professor, full of confidence, asked Selena to open the camcorder. But there was only static flickering on the screen. 
It was the monster that had destroyed all the electronic devices nearby. No one could capture any video footage. So, why are they still holding Selena? The professor, however, said that the military allowed her to continue participating in the research project because she had attached the locator onto the monster? It turns out they were waiting for her. Official statements cannot be trusted. Her return to the research lab indicates that she has a salary. This is important for single mother Selena. She didn't struggle anymore. On the other side, Miles and Field were still searching for Nim. On that day, they found the supermarket with flickering spotlights. They felt that Nim was nearby. As soon as they turned around, they saw Nim running into the warehouse. They followed into the warehouse and saw Nim barely alive. Little did they know what Nim had gone through these days. At that moment, supermarket staff walked in. Nim, seeing strangers, immediately ran out of the door and disappeared. Miles and Field don't give up hope and continue their search. Professor Whitebeard obtained a sea anemone. It has a unique shape and is extremely sensitive to light. When light shines on it, it changes its shape and extends itself towards the light source. Once the light source disappears, it immediately returns to its original state. After repeated experiments, the results are all the same. Professor Whitebeard had a thought. He quickly found his assistant and explained all his deductions. Testing revealed the sea anemone's genetic sequence is different from any other organism. They are composed of three repeating sets of molecular structures in the natural world. All genetic sequences are unique. It can even be said that they are completely random and chaotic. Such organized genetic sequences must be the result of human manipulation. Could it be that someone has mastered genetic programming technology? Could this explain the origin of the monster? With such a significant discovery, the professor wasted no time. He approached the military representative and handed over the research report, explaining the implications. The military representative took it seriously. He understood the severity of the situation. He said that they would transfer Professor Whitebeard to a secure location for tight protection. Although this reaction was somewhat excessive, Professor Whitebeard didn't ask any more questions. As a result, a car accelerated madly towards Professor Whitebeard, crashing into him without braking. It seems that his discovery brought about deadly consequences. The culprit is immediately recognizable. Selena and Justin received a notification. They came to the hospital to inquire about the professor's condition. However, Professor Whitebeard was already in critical condition. He was tightly wrapped up and unable to speak. The police approached and questioned if they knew anything about the situation. Selena said she didn't know. At that moment, she noticed unfamiliar people monitoring the hospital. She realized that Professor Whitebeard's injury was not from a typical car accident. After she and Justin left the hospital, Selena shared her suspicions with the professor's assistant. The assistant also felt that things were not so simple. Therefore, he started implementing a contingency plan. He gathered all of Professor Whitebeard's research reports and documents before he could finish organizing. Armed personnel stormed into the laboratory, conducting a search. The assistant quickly grabbed the most important sea anemone. He intended to escape while the armed personnel were not paying attention. Both sides circled around and hid from each other in the laboratory. Suddenly, an alarm sounded in the corridor. The armed personnel chased after the assistant. While running, the assistant had an accident and collided with a piece of experimental equipment. His waist was pierced. Enduring the pain, he managed to escape into the elevator. Selena and Justin were watching TV at home. Suddenly, a loud noise was heard. They ran outside to investigate. It was the assistant who had crashed the car. Selena approached to inquire about his injuries. The assistant's face was covered in blood, barely clinging to life. He handed Selena a key. He said, you need to hold on to it. Then he closed his eyes and never opened them again. It seems his body didn't have the protection of the yellow slime. His self-healing ability had been depleted. Looking at this blood-stained key, Justin and Selena felt incredibly heavy-hearted. Considering everything that had happened, they knew that mysterious forces and military powers were at play. They didn't know who exactly was behind it. They were unsure which truths were being concealed. It was certain that it was related to the professor's research. Now that the professor and the assistant had lost their lives because of it, the question arose whether they should continue the investigation. What would they do if they encountered obstacles or danger? Should they let the truth sink into oblivion? This didn't align with Selena's character either. After discussing it, they decided to continue searching for the truth. Selena had never considered her own son in all of this. Meanwhile, Miles found Nim. He kept it in an abandoned car. One day, it was discovered by a police officer. He mistook it for an alligator, so he tried to catch it and release it into the sea. Miles and Field watched as Nim electrocuted the police officer, leaving his face blackened. After this incident, Miles and Field realized Nim couldn't be kept anymore. It had acquired the power to kill, although it still listens to its owner. Keeping it further will inevitably lead to a major incident. Even though it's difficult, it must be released back into the sea. After a simple farewell ceremony, 
Little Nim seemed to understand Miles' words, it turned and disappeared into the sea. Let's not say that this release laid the foundation for future disasters, because even if this one wasn't released, there are many others in the sea, they will soon make their appearance. The control tower at the Polish airport received an urgent distress call, it was a civilian airliner, they said they encountered rain clouds accompanied by lightning, the radar showed sky was clear, there was no cloud data whatsoever, even the nearby airspace had no drifting clouds. During the communication, the aircraft was struck by a green lightning bolt, it lost control immediately, it began free-falling towards the sea, on the sea surface, a mass of monstrous creatures appeared in groups, green lightning frequently flashed among them, it seems that they were responsible for this air disaster, Justin and Selena were perplexed by the sea anemone, it wasn't until Justin put the sea anemone in the refrigerator that things took a turn, open the refrigerator again, it was already filled with unknown green vines, the sea anemone was pulsating rhythmically like a heart, it was unclear if the vines were supplying it with energy, or if it was supplying energy to the vines. Selena followed the vines to find an answer. She saw the answer. The vines had extended into the power socket. The sea anemone was powering itself through electricity. Selena's mind flashed back to the volcano she had seen underwater. She connected the two events. She thought that the sea anemone might be a phototactic and thermotactic organism, just like those monsters in the sea. To verify this idea, Selena said she wanted to go back to the seabed to investigate. Those creatures came from the underground magma layer. This discovery was too bold. Without exploring the underground, there would be no way to prove it. Currently, the two of them were still being pursued by the military. They had no way to dive into the seabed. They didn't have a professional submarine. Luckily, the solution appeared itself. Selena's friend Wilson found an abandoned boiler. He wanted to use it to build a submarine. There are really the same physical similarities between a boiler and a submarine. It was thick enough to withstand water pressure. It had an exit and an observation window. The basic conditions were met. The three of them worked together to modify the boiler and create a submarine. After four days of busy work, they actually created a makeshift submarine. To be precise, it was more like a sealed canister. People with claustrophobia and deep sea phobia are not suitable to try. Everyone proceeded cautiously for the first dive, testing the seal ability. Success or failure hinges on this moment. Justin muttered as he opened the sealed window. As a result, a gush of seawater hit him and knocked him down, causing injuries. It seemed that improvements were necessary. This time, the seal ability was not an issue. Wilson installed an escape system for the safety of both persons. As long as the motor stops running, the life raft will inflate automatically, instantly bringing both people back to the sea surface. Although everything that could be done was done, everyone knew that this dive was filled with dangers. There were too many unpredictable factors, with a tense atmosphere. Justin and Selena entered the sealed canister. Wilson operated the crane on the boat, lowering them into the water. With the gradual release of the rope, the sealed canister slowly descended, sinking deeper into the sea. The two of them kept a close eye on the thermometer and pressure gauge. Everything went smoothly without any abnormalities. When the depth display exceeded 600 meters, the observation window started to leak water. The three of them needed to decide whether to return immediately or continue diving further. The scene shifts to the other side. A fisherman was repairing a floating bridge walkway. He dropped his hammer into the water. As the fisherman fumbled in the water, he heard strange noises. He didn't have time to think about where the sound was coming from. When he suddenly felt something biting his hand, he exerted all his strength to pull his hand out. He discovered that his little finger was missing. It was bitten off by an unidentified creature. His companion rushed over to investigate upon hearing the sound. However, he did not see the fisherman's figure. After searching around, he found the fisherman's body floating back to the surface. He was completely disfigured. Such strange incidents continued to occur. A fishing boat was hauling in its nets. It was a season of abundant catch. Every time they went out to sea, they returned with a full load. They didn't know what awaited them this time. When they pulled up the nets, they found no catch this time. Not only that, there was also a four-legged lizard lying in the net. The two had never seen such a creature before. They speculated that this little creature had driven away the fish. They took out a wooden cage and locked the four-legged lizard inside. In the middle of the night, the fisherman was kept awake by strange noises. He grabbed a weapon and approached the cage to scare the four-legged lizard. If you make any more noise, I'll eat you, he threatened. The creature stared back at the fisherman with fierce and evil eyes. They stared at each other in a standoff for a while. The fisherman threw the cage into the freezer and went back to sleep. He didn't know that the impact caused the cage to break. The four-legged lizard ran out from inside. The next morning, the fisherman's companion discovered that the freezer door was half open. White steam was emanating from inside. The fisherman realized that he might have caused the trouble. He went inside the freezer to investigate. The pressure valve had been damaged. The fish inside were almost rotten. The temperature was over 60 degrees. This was very strange. Normally, it should be the same as the temperature outside. 
How did it increase? It must have been the little creature's doing. The fisherman wanted to catch it and punish it. As he turned around, he appeared in front of everyone covered in scars. The bag in his hand indicated that he had succeeded. To vent his anger, he kept kicking the four-legged lizard in the bag. The little creature made strange cries. It made everyone's hair stand on end with its noise. The next scene was even more unexpected. The fisherman suddenly collapsed to the ground. Lifeless. The bag fell to the ground. The four-legged lizard darted into the sea. There were frequent monster attacks at the seaside. This caused panic among the townspeople. Various departments came to collect samples and investigate in order to find the truth. Based on the bite marks on the deceased, it was impossible to determine the species of the creature. The experts had never seen this species before. The autopsy results revealed that several other victims died from electric shock injuries. This further adds to the mystery of the species. What are the creatures in the natural world that can produce electric shocks? It is uncertain whether electric eels and jellyfish are involved. Therefore, the experts concluded that the incidents were caused by alligator attacks. A few days later, everyone worked together to catch a giant alligator. They thought they had found the culprit. However, upon examination, they found the alligator's stomach was empty. Poor little thing hasn't eaten for five days. Miles witnessed all of this. He knew in his heart that it was Nim's doing. However, he did not speak up. Without conclusive evidence, one should not jump to conclusions. He wanted to find Field and go to the seaside together to confirm. Waves splashed on the sea's surface. Miles rushed into the water and asked, Is that you, Nim? However, when the little monster surfaced, he realized that it wasn't Nim. Moreover, several different sized creatures appeared around him. It seemed that the monsters were reproducing rapidly. They were responsible for the attacks. Selena underwater was in urgent danger. If she returned to the surface now, it would take twice as long to dive back down. Selena needed to make a decision quickly. She was unwilling to give up this hard-earned dive. She decided to return only when the leak in her suit became unbearable. In this way, the two of them continued to descend. When they reached a depth of 1,800 meters, the rope couldn't bear the weight and snapped. The sealed canister was thrown into the seabed and landed in a cave. The rate of seawater infiltration increased. The impact left the two of them disoriented. The sealed canister lay in the deep sea. Selena picked up the radio to contact Wilson, but there was no response. There were still many problems to overcome now. The circuit was completely damaged. There wasn't much oxygen left. The water seepage was still increasing. There was no possibility of seeking help nearby. The two of them overcame their psychological barriers and started repairing the circuit. They pinned their last hope on the life raft. If they could get the compressor to start, the life raft would inflate automatically. After repairing the circuit, Selena pressed the switch, but there was no response at all. It turned out that the life raft was trapped underneath the canister after it fell. It was truly a case of, when it rains, it pours. Was there really no solution? The two of them fell into despair. However, there was still a way. They pushed the canister to the other side, trying to expose the life raft. After several attempts, they found it futile. It only consumed more oxygen and energy. Selena told Justin to stop and not waste their energy. The two of them still hadn't come up with a self-rescue plan. The worst news is that Justin has started hallucinating due to oxygen deprivation. He looked at the shadows outside and mistakenly believed that someone was walking underwater. Selena went forward to check and confirmed that there was nothing there. She couldn't give up at this point. She picked up the radio again and sent a distress signal to the vicinity. This time, they actually received a response. After some communication between the two parties with no common language, the communication ceased. Justin deduced that the other side was speaking Chinese. He regretted not learning Chinese earlier. The other party became even more interesting. It seemed strange that they appeared in American waters for exploration, but couldn't speak English. Did it make sense? In any case, this rescue attempt ended in failure. The two of them were so focused on escaping that they almost forgot why they had come down there in the first place. Aren't they looking for evidence of the existence of the monster? The canister started shaking under external forces. The two of them instinctively thought that there was a monster nearby, so they took out their recording equipment. They captured the shocking scene before them on video. The monster was laying eggs. Last time, the eggs floated on the sea surface. This time, all the eggs were being laid on the deep seabed and didn't float up. It was truly a peculiar biological characteristic. Numerous monsters swam above their heads. Some even grazed against the canister, causing it to shake. This gave the two of them an idea. If the monsters could attack the canister, their thrust could potentially expose the life raft. The two of them desperately made noise to attract the monsters. They also turned on the flashlight and flashed it repeatedly. As expected, it had an effect. A monster swam towards them. The tremendous impact caused the canister to roll around. In this way, the life raft was released and underwent a long ascent. The two of them returned to the surface and breathed fresh air again. They violently kicked open the cabin door. A large amount of seawater rushed in. It was already dark. 
The sea surface was turbulent with heavy rain. Wilson's boat was gone. The two of them crawled out of the canister and entered the life raft. They swayed on the turbulent sea surface. The life raft experienced a rapid ascent. After reaching the sea surface, it started to develop small leaks. Justin took out a strong adhesive bandage to repair it. However, it was blown away by strong winds. How could he find it by jumping into the sea? At that moment, a monster swam towards the sea surface. Justin quickly swam back to the life raft upon seeing it. The monster didn't pay them any attention. The cold weather, low temperature, and rain caused their body temperature to drop rapidly. If they stayed in such conditions overnight, they would freeze to death. In order to make the main characters embrace, any lie can be fabricated. How much lower can the temperature in the Atlantic during summer nights be? After embracing each other, they endured until daylight, not frozen to death, not even a cold. The current crisis was not knowing when the rescue would arrive. Having only one mouthful of fresh water was simply not enough. There were also several shark fins visible in the surrounding waters. The good news was that when the monster arrived, it would eat the sharks first. The bad news was that they might be eaten by the sharks first. Selena was, after all, a marine biologist. She understood the behavior of sharks. She led Justin to howl like Tarzan. This scared away the sharks. I was thinking, isn't there a radio in the sealed canister? Why didn't they think of using it? The two of them sank into despair, and could only wait for Wilson to rescue them. Where did Wilson go? The police gave us an answer. They found Wilson's boat. The glass windows were shattered. There were many bullet casings on the deck. Bloodstains were present in various places. Wilson was not on the boat. Guess he is more or less bad luck. Nightfall came again. The two of them had to embrace each other for warmth. At this moment, a shocking scene appeared before their eyes. Several lightning bolts flashed, and connected the sky to the sea surface. Then, a gigantic light spot slowly approached. It was a group of monsters coming over. The sky started to pour down heavy rain again. The life raft of the two individuals filled with seawater. Suddenly, a monster leaped out. It threw the two people on the life raft into the air. Upon returning to the water surface, they found the life raft useless. The two individuals drifted on the water, relying on the remnants of the life raft. Let the waves of the sea take them wherever they go. They opened their eyes once again. The two individuals were surrounded by monster eggs. Selena understood that the monsters were protecting their offspring. Being surrounded by them meant they wouldn't be attacked. Soon, it would make them helpless. Selena crushed one of the eggs. She found that it released a green luminescent liquid. This gave Justin an idea. He arranged the green sticky fluid into the SOS pattern. They could now wait for aerial rescue. However, this behavior is not advisable. But speaking of which, since it's not good for monsters to attack humans, it's better to crush all the monster eggs. In short, the distress signal worked. A helicopter flew towards the two individuals. Just as it was about to approach the sea surface, it was scared away by the emerging monster. There was an unknown large dangerous creature ahead. The rescue team immediately turned back. The two of them don't even think about the reality that they are in the monster eggs. How could monsters make people approach them? There are gains and losses. However, the helicopter returned, and they rescued the two individuals. They tightly guarded the bag containing the DV, and prevented anyone from touching it. It was something acquired at the cost of their lives. On Miles' side, he was attacked by a small monster at the seaside last time. He had several bite wounds all over his body. He didn't pay much attention to it. However, a pleasant surprise was that Nim returned. They could play together again. After a simple treatment, Miles went to school as usual. In the class, when the teacher asked him a question, his vision distorted. He then fainted. His sister came to the school clinic to visit Miles. She asked him to tell the truth. He showed her all the wounds on his body. The doctor measured his temperature and found it was 41 Celsius degrees. Within a moment, it had risen to 45 Celsius degrees. Miles passed out due to the high fever. He was transferred to the hospital for physical cooling. They put him in water filled with ice cubes. His sister was very worried. She thought it might be related to the pet monster at home. She wanted to take Nim to the hospital for testing. She fetched a pet carrier. She used sea salt to lure Nim inside, and then took it to the hospital, just as she placed it on the table, and called for a doctor to examine it. Nim bit through the cage and escaped. They searched everywhere. Finally, they found it on Miles' bed. It was licking his wounds. Upon seeing a group of strangers, Nim ran away again. Miles' electrocardiogram became a straight line. The doctor immediately started resuscitation. Despite multiple shocks from the defibrillator, there was still no response. The aquarium director and a police officer outside cornered Nim in the hallway. The police quietly took out their gun and pulled the trigger, with a gunshot sound. Miles sat up. He woke up. Then he struggled frantically to find Nim, to confirm if it was safe. When he found Nim, it was already lying in a pool of blood. Miles sadly held Nim. He burst into tears. Nim had never harmed him. Miles' physical indicators were fine. 
and he was no longer in danger. His sister uncovered the bandage on his leg, and found that the wound had completely healed without any scars. It was Nim who saved his younger brother. The aquarium director was very interested in Nim. He took the body back to the laboratory for dissection and research. In the laboratory, Nim woke up on the ice. It didn't die, but no longer trusted humans. Miles came to see it. It hid under the table. It snarled and bared its teeth at Miles in a threat. Miles turned around and handed it a sea fish. Unable to resist the temptation, Nim extended its small paw, and pulled the fish closer to itself. At this moment, the aquarium director said, Nim has a powerful self-healing ability. It should be studied for medical purposes. Many patients have been treated and saved because of it. It is a benevolent act for the benefit of all humanity. Upon hearing the reasonable words, Miles agreed to this matter. However, he made one condition. Nim must not be harmed. The director immediately agreed. Miles used sea salt to lure Nim out. They huddled together, one human and one creature. Nim knew that only Miles wouldn't harm it. Two days later, Miles went to the laboratory to see Nim. He found that they were not feeding Nim. They were even injecting sedatives and extracting bone marrow from it. Miles wanted to confront the director about this. The director's attitude was arrogant, and his expression became cold and indifferent, as if he had changed. Miles turned around and was driven out of the laboratory. Walking on the road, the streetlights he passed started flickering. Looking in the mirror, he saw his pupils turn vertical. The sound coming from his throat was the same as Nim's. Is he going to transform into a monster hero? Miles didn't feel excited. Instead, he was filled with unease. He found his girlfriend Marissa, and made plans to relax by the seaside. As they were getting closer to each other, Miles released an electric charge that shocked Marissa. She thought it was just static electricity from the dry seaside weather, and didn't pay much attention to it. She wanted to hold Miles' hand, yet she was shocked by a stronger electric current. Their friends who came to the seaside with them went swimming in the water. It had been a while, and they hadn't returned. Everyone started shouting for help. Marissa rushed into the sea to rescue them. A green lightning appeared on the water surface. Everyone was too scared to approach. The next day, professional search and rescue teams joined forces to find the three missing people. They searched the sea and land thoroughly, but still couldn't find them. On the other side, some children were playing. They discovered something strange in the bushes. Upon closer inspection, they found it was a human arm. The parents arrived to confirm. The arm had the watch the child usually wore. It indicated that the missing classmate was attacked and killed by a monster last night. This made Miles doubt himself for the first time. Although Nim had never harmed him, it wasn't the same for others. He decided not to defend the monsters anymore. The police quickly located the aquarium. They demanded the director to hand over the monster. The director, in order to protect themselves, claimed that they were at odds with the monster. They even smashed a monster egg to show their stance. The public felt that the aquarium which had been keeping the monsters. So people came to protest. The police decided to install a tracker on Nim's body, to let it return to the sea and find its companions, and then capture them all at once. Because Nim is owned by Miles, the police pretended to respect his choice, and asked him to install the tracker. In reality, they were somewhat afraid that the monsters would get angry and harm them. Miles could only comply. The situation had developed to a point where he couldn't control it anymore. After Nim was released into the sea, the police monitored the tracker's location. Soon, it stayed in an unfamiliar area of the sea. It seemed like this was its lair. The police quickly mobilized and arrived at the designated area. They discovered that the area was filled with monster eggs. Everyone started fishing out the giant eggs. They were all handled together. At this moment, Miles noticed that he was undergoing a transformation. His palms started secreting mucus. This filled him with anxiety. Was he going to turn into a monster? In order to prevent the situation from worsening, Miles poured gasoline from a barrel onto the monster eggs. He set them ablaze at once. This truly put an end to the monster's lineage. Miles found the aquarium director. He asked about Nim's situation. The tracker showed that it was still active in the nearby swamp area. The police immediately mobilized. A large number of small monsters appeared here. The police tried to surround the monsters with fishing nets, preventing them from escaping into the deep sea. They could only flee towards the shore. And here, guns were already prepared. As soon as the monsters ran towards them, they opened fire. The small monsters cried out in agony as they were shot. They no longer advanced. One injured monster rushed towards the shore and stopped. The police thought they had dealt with the monster, and picked it up to show their accomplishment. Unexpectedly, the monster suddenly moved, and bit the police officer's neck. A wave of monsters crawled onto the land, and started attacking humans. Bullets were no longer effective. The monsters launched a fierce attack. People can only flee. Even when hiding inside the car, their arm was bitten by the monsters who shattered car window and rushed in. Miles arrived at the scene and recognized it was Nim. He then told Nim to stop and not attack humans. Nim expressed its grievances, but indeed stopped. Miles removed the tracker. He also apologized to Nim. 
Hoping to earn its forgiveness, Marissa arrived. She saw that all the monsters had stopped attacking, and instead gathered around Miles. They appeared to be worshipping him. Everyone understood. The monsters saw Miles as their leader. Now only Miles could control them. Miles bid farewell to Marissa as he had to fulfill his mission. He walked towards the sea with all the monsters. The war before their eyes came to an end. The next day, Miles appeared unharmed on the beach. After waking up, he called home to let them know he was safe. However, two large dogs kept barking aggressively at him. Miles was frightened, and his pupils turned into vertical lines. It seemed the dogs had discovered his monster nature. Not only that, he also became increasingly craving salt. Marissa looked at Miles with great concern. She had a premonition that something bad was going to happen. However, Miles suddenly had a reaction. He received some kind of information. He turned around and saw Nim appearing in the restaurant. It followed Miles and jumped onto a chair. The people around were terrified. The restaurant owner even took out a gun, preparing to attack. Miles calmed everyone down. Nim won't harm anyone. Then, they walked out of the gate with the pet. The two of them arrived at the seaside with Nim. They commanded it to jump in. Although Nim didn't understand, it complied. Yet it looked up at Miles with anticipation. It was filled with expectations for him. The surrounding small monsters gathered around, waiting for Miles' response. It seemed like they were welcoming their master home. Naturally, Miles couldn't live with them. He ordered them to go to the deep sea. Miles returned to school. The people around Miles began to change their attitudes towards him. Everyone avoided him. They no longer communicated with him. They gossiped and pointed behind his back. Even salted fish were placed in his locker. He was isolated. Miles didn't care initially. However, the school bully found him. First, the bully physically attacked and humiliated him. The bully even choked him for amusement. If the bully didn't let go, Miles would have suffocated. Miles' energy erupted. He broke free from the bully's grip with one hand. Then he pinched the bully's hand with his fingertips. He pressed the bully's forehead and released an electric shock. The bully immediately fell to the ground, stunned. The surrounding students looked at Miles in shock and fear. They treated him as a monster. How ridiculous. No one helps when Miles was bullied. Now he successfully counterattacked with his own strength. Yet he was treated as monsters by others. Do weak people deserve to be bullied and even have no right to resist? On the other hand, Selena sighed. They finally obtained evidence of the monster's existence, and they spread the news to the public through the media. However, they didn't anticipate that the military had already devised a countermeasure. They bribed experts to accuse Selena's videos of being fake. Using non-existent video analysis techniques, they easily explained it to deceive the public. By the way, they also accused Selena of academic paper fraud. She had already been expelled from the research institute. She felt resentful and wanted revenge. As a result, the public didn't believe in the existence of monsters. Selena was also blamed by everyone. Both of them were deeply troubled by this. They couldn't believe the military would act so absurdly. When they were at their wits end, they received an email from a stranger. The sender claimed to know the origin of the monsters and offered to inform them. They agreed to meet at a specific time and location. They decided to meet the person first before making any decisions. They drove to the meeting location. The person turned out to be a doctor who arrived in a helicopter. The grand entrance puzzled Justin. He felt that something was amiss, and advised Selena not to go. Selena insisted on checking the situation first. Selena was blindfolded and taken onto the helicopter. She arrived at a laboratory. The doctor shared everything she knew with Selena. It started 20 years ago. The doctor was hired by a mysterious organization. They researched a miraculous drug for rapid human cell regeneration. The doctor's task was to program genes artificially. They fused singular characteristics of various organisms into nematodes. Eventually, the nematodes gained the ability to regenerate themselves. Why go through all that trouble instead of studying earthworms? The doctor discovered that in this organization, there were over 2,500 scientists like her. Each one was responsible for a small field of study. Nobody knew what they ultimately achieved. It was not until the doctor saw Selena's report on the underwater monsters, that she seemed to understand. Their research had been combined and integrated. Then, they created gigantic monsters. However, the doctor didn't have detailed information about the organization. The only clue she knew, is that there is a well-known pharmaceutical company under the organization's name. Selena wanted to continue questioning. In the middle of the conversation, she suddenly fainted and fell to the ground. When she woke up again, she found herself abandoned in a roadside bush. Back at home, Selena and Justin researched the pharmaceutical company together. They decided to infiltrate and investigate to confirm their suspicions. They pretended to be journalists and requested an interview with the company's executive. They were immediately exposed and kicked out. Undeterred, they went to the company's warehouse. It was discovered that this place had already been emptied. In order to find some clues, they decided to split up and explore separately. Justin arrived at a gloomy laboratory. He heard the crying of a baby inside. He cautiously approached. 
He wanted to see what was under the table, the dark mass dared not come out. It asked, have you seen my mommy? Justin thought it was a lost child, and planned to pull it out forcefully. However, the other party immediately revealed its true form, and attacked Justin angrily. The creature, a large black gorilla, said, you're not my mommy. Selena heard the screams and rushed over, pulling out her gun in preparation to shoot. The gorilla and Justin were still fighting. Justin was helpless and dragged away. In her panic, Selena fired her gun, but she missed with every shot. Instead, it made the gorilla go to the glass door, and bang on it as a show of strength. It left two enormous bloody handprints, then it ran away. What kind of creature is this and why can it speak? Justin was so frightened that he couldn't speak. Pharmaceutical companies are even more careless. Such important physical evidence can still be left to wait for the main characters to discover. At this point, the climax of the entire story is about to come. In the depths of the oceanic magma, the monsters were no longer satisfied with this small amount of heat. In order to obtain energy, they began to explore the magma layer of the Earth's core. Due to the enormous number of monsters, they completely changed the underwater topography. A magnitude 9 for earthquake erupted. The seismological station received the information. They immediately relayed this message to the entire country. Underwater earthquakes can trigger tsunamis. The waves can reach a height of hundreds of meters. They are capable of engulfing entire landmasses. The public must evacuate to higher ground. The sheriff who received the message is going door to door, notifying the residents. However, they encountered a group of people who wanted to bring the monster, Miles, to justice. The scene was chaotic. The sheriff fired a warning shot. He informed everyone about the earthquake. No one cares about Miles now. Everyone is packing their belongings and preparing to escape. Miles' family is doing the same. They packed essential supplies like food and water. A message came through the television. The highways are completely blocked, and cars are at a standstill. There are two hours left for the tsunami warning. The family can only resort to plan B. They want to evacuate by sea. They arrived at the harbor. They struggled to board the ship. Miles noticed that his girlfriend Marissa was not on the ship. He learned from her father's mouth. Marissa went to Miles' house. Miles was unsure of what to do. Then he saw another male classmate riding Marissa's bike. He approached and asked the person about the car's location. Despite opposition, Miles resolutely jumped into the sea and swam towards the shore. He first returned to his own house, but didn't find Marissa. Then he saw Nim. With Nim's guidance, he found Marissa who had fainted. The two searched for the car keys in the house. Nim was interested in the TV footage. The reporter was reporting from the front. Then a monster's gaping mouth swallowed the reporter. The TV signal disappeared immediately. Nim had a sorry expression on his face. The two drove to the intersection. They collided with the panicked Selena and Justin. They decided to escape together. Justin took charge of driving. The students sat in the back seat. Selena turned around to talk. She noticed Nim's presence. She couldn't help but scream profanity in her heart. She made great effort to look for the monster, while Miles keep it as a pet beside himself. It's so unfair. Not long after, the car ran out of gas and stopped on the road. Huge waves, hundreds of meters away, were approaching. The four of them remembered the nearby church. It was the tallest building there. Without hesitation, they ran frantically. They entered the church and climbed the stairs upwards, discovered that the skylight was tightly closed. Justin used all his strength to start hitting upwards. The seawater spread throughout the church and poured in through the windows. The water level quickly rose to the stairs. The people embraced each other in despair, but the impact of the seawater suddenly stopped. Selena said, this is the calm before the storm. It indicates that an even bigger wave is coming. Justin grabbed a brick and continued smashing the skylight. At that moment, Miles noticed a giant monster swimming towards them. However, it just looked at them and then left. Finally, the skylight was smashed open. The group quickly climbed to the top floor. The seawater kept crashing below them. The entire building was shaking, and they didn't know how long it could hold. Before long, everything returned to calm. The group stood up and looked at everything outside being covered by water. Only a few rooftops remained above the water. Nim and everyone else around looked into the distance. They didn't know whether to lament their unfortunate fate, or celebrate their survival. The end of the series, the American TV series, Surface, 2005, it was released on 2005. One five. 15 episodes in total, with only one season. It should have been suspended due to poor ratings. The quality of this film is still acceptable. At that time, special effects were also aesthetically pleasing. Two storylines were interwoven. They converged in the final episode, starting as a monster film. It turned into a mystery film, then transformed into a youth campus film, and finally became a world apocalypse disaster film. So, it was a film that combined many elements. The ending was inevitably disappointing. It was just a traditional standard American TV series. It's not surprising nor bad. If you are interested in old movies, you can take a look. The female lead is not stunning enough. The male lead looks a bit old. 
the storyline of the little boy is still acceptable. It's similar to the movie, How to Train Your Dragon. This is where today's episode ends. See you in the next film.